my name is Pascal and today the Garmin Tactics Delta Solar. Yes, by far my favorite sport watch. In fact, it's not just a sport watch. It's a navigation tool. Calling it a watch is not enough. It's really a navigation tool. And I buy it six months ago just to test it, make some tutorial video that you can see just right here. And I thought that, well, at this price, maybe I will resell it. I'm not sure that I will have enough for my money. And well, <laughs> I got more than I thought and I will keep it. That's that's for sure. That's my new favorite watch. And well, I tested for six months and here's my review. Before we begin, I have to say that I use it for walking, hiking, cycling. And because I didn't pass winter with it yet, uh, of course, uh, I run in winter, so uh, I will run with it, but I didn't run with it yet. But for walking, cycling and hiking, that has been a wonderful watch. Yes, it's expensive, but you really get what you pay for and even more. The reason why I opt for this watch is because I don't like to have to choose between some options. This one just got them all. It does everything. And uh, there is two technology that, well, there is one thing that when I buy a watch is essential and it's that it needs to have a sapphire crystal glass just because it's scratch proof. You don't want to buy a watch at this price and eventually you knock it somewhere and you got a scratch. So every time you watch your watch, maybe two, 300 times a day, you see the scratch. No, you don't want that. So that's why I want a Sapphire Crystal Glass. And there was a technology that I like a lot on watch and it's the fact that it can be charged uh, with the solar energy. And actually, the uh, Garmin Tactics is the only one that can have both technology. So, Safari Glass and Solar Recharge. It's the only one yet. Probably it will come in the next years with more model, but actually it's the only one. And that's one of the main reasons why I get this one. Basically, a Garmin Tactics is a Garmin Phoenix in a better case, with few other uh, features that we will see a bit later in this video. Previously, before I buy this watch, I was using the Sunto Mbit 3 Peak. And as you can see, that's the watch that I have used <laughs> for about four years. And it passed through everything and we'd have a many reason to have a scratch screen and it never happened but the bezel is disgusting uh, the bezel is full of scratch and it doesn't look great but the screen is fine because it's a sapphire crystal screen but in the case of this one well sure i only have it for six months but the bezel is still perfect. It did pass through many things and still doesn't have any scratch. They call it um, diamond-like carbon, maybe because it is as resistant as diamond, but well, yes, it, it's very, very resistant. It, it, it looks brand new, actually. Uh, at the back, you've got quality material. That's uh, metal. I don't, I don't, I don't know what what type of metal it is. And on the side, you got uh, plastic. But still, it look great. And if you look in the spec on the Garmin website, they say it's made of this. But actually, this is only a scientific term or no, not a scientific term, but uh, advertising term to say plastic. It's plastic. <laughs> but anyway, it's fine. It's, it's a good quality plastic and the rest of the watch is, well, more than good quality material. One of the thing I love about this watch is the battery. The battery is just insane. 
Actually, it is full charge and it remains 17 days of batteries. If I start an activity, it will tell me that there's remain 59 hours of battery in GPS mode. And that doesn't include all the energy that goes in with the solar energy. Uh, actually, with the solar energy, you won't be able to charge it when you are into a GPS mode. It will just make it drain at a slower speed. Uh, but if you are not into an activity and you leave it at the sun, well, it will recharge the battery. At my first charge, and I can say that it's still like that, I keep it on my wrist for 13 days in a row, 24 hours, 7 days a week. I only remove it to go take my shower and, well, I keep it on my wrist for 13 days in which I use it in GPS mode for 24 hours. So that's 24 seven of uh, pulse, heart rate pulse uh, calculation, respiration rate, uh, sleep tracking, uh, in average, a bit more than two hours of GPS activities a day. And well, that's just mind blowing, 13 days without charge. And when I charge it, it wasn't empty. It was just too empty. So I was worried to uh, miss of battery in my next activity. Maybe it was uh, remaining between five to 10 percent of battery after 13 days. One other thing I love about the watch is that it's totally independent from a phone or a computer. You can, you can just use the watch by itself. Uh, maybe you will need to connect it on the phone for the first time, just maybe uh, to sync it to your uh, Garmin Connect uh, app uh, or account, your Garmin account. And that's it. After that, if you don't have a phone, if you don't have a computer, that's not a problem. You can sync it through Wi-Fi at home. If, you're, if your phone is dead, if your computer have a problem, no problem, you sync it directly to the Wi-Fi. Otherwise, well, it will sync automatically to your phone. That goes well. But I love the fact that the watch doesn't need anything to, to sync its activity or to change any setting into the watch. Everything you can do with that watch, you can do it straight to the watch. You don't need any application to do it. The watch can do it at all. Now I need to talk about the size. Personally, I love it, but it's a big watch. I love it because it's a big watch, but I know it's not made for everyone. Women, especially with the tiny wrist. I don't think it's made for you. Um, well, one of the great thing about the fact that it's big is the size of the screen. You can input a lot of data on the same screen and they will be readable and you won't need to change from a page to another to get the information you want. You can put many information on a single screen. And it's thick. Uh, <laughs> let's put it on my wrist. Uh, I always had love big watch. But when I put that one on my wrist, well, I tell myself, well, yes, it's, it's huge. Uh, I have the impression to got a rock on my wrist and I get used to it. Yes, it's big, but I get used to it. Uh, after wearing it for a few days, well, I stop realizing that it's there. Uh, it's heavy, but it's not that heavy. Um, and the material are made in a, such a great quality. Uh, before I had used that one, the plastic at the back was fine for my wrist, but at some point, um, the silicone, uh, after a few hours, and few hours are more than 12, 
uh, I wanted to remove it because uh, I feel that my wrist wanted to uh, breathe. And with that one, there is the nylon uh, band and that's a, re re a revelation to me. Uh, it can, it, it, let, it let your wrist breathe. That's, that's perfect. Uh, in the 13 days I wear it in a row, uh, never I feel that my wrist need to breathe. And if I put a cheap watch with cheap metal, I will have re allergic reaction on my wrist or there's always something when I put a watch, but this one, even if it's big, I never feel uh, I want to remove it because my, my wrist need to, to breathe, breath, breath or uh, get rid of it. Well, you get used to it and at some point you stop feeling it on your wrist. So that's mind blowing. When you buy it, you have two band that come with it. So the one that is pre-installed is the nylon one, but you also got the, uh, the silicone one. And well, after a few months, I tell myself that, well, I will test it uh, because at first I was telling myself that I will use that one when I was not doing sport and that one when I was doing sport. And finally, well, I always use that one because when I use that one, well, after 12 hours maximum, I told myself that, well, no, I will not test it for a week because already I don't like it. So, but, but, but if you want to change it, because uh, you can uh, put any kind of uh, band on it, you can look on the Garmin website and there's a lot of, a lot of it. And if you want to replace it, well, that's pretty quick, as you can see. Uh, well, that's it. It's changed. So that that's that's quick. And <laughs> I know when I do it, uh, it may look like, well, is it too easy to remove? And no, no, you really have to pry at the back on a little switch and then you can remove it in a certain way and you won't be able to remove it that fast the first time you will do it. That take a bit of practice. And no, it won't fall even in a big impact. That's just impossible. When you got it on your wrist, you can't remove it. That's just not possible. But anyway, that's the one I uh, put on and I won't change it. Uh, before I use it, I was telling myself that mm, I don't know if it's get wet, will it be wet for a long time? And no, no, even if it get wet when I wash my hand or when I go uh, swim, it get dry pretty fast. Another thing I love after trying few uh, watch of this generation is how much the uh, heart rate sensor at the back is not that bright. <laughs> if we compare with the Sunto 5, I like to say that this one make a kind of flashlight and when you are in the dark, well, <laughs> you will see it a lot. And if you sleep with it, well, maybe it will wake you up. It's, it's just too bright. Uh, maybe it's because of its size. Uh, maybe if I wear it, you will be able to see it. Maybe it's because of its size that the light have to uh, go through more distance before going out. But if you sleep with it, you won't see it, except if you put your eye just right there and try to see it. And if you walk in the dark and you look down, well, yes, you will see some green light, but not that much. If you take a quick look, it just looked like that. Well, now because I remove it, you see it try to uh, see better. So it, it, it was glowing, but at the moment I remove it, you were able to see that it wasn't that bright. At the beginning, I told you that a Garmin Tactics was almost the same thing as a Garmin Phoenix, but in a better case. Well, uh, there's three features that you got more than a Garmin Phoenix, and most of them are for military use. Uh, you've got the kill switch, that by default is that when you press on those two buttons, 
it kill your watch. Well, in fact, it's a factory reset. It will just erase everything into your watch so the enemy doesn't know where your camp is. Um, well, that's one of the feature and you can disable that function to replace it with something. I will show you what I did with it later. Uh, the other option is the stealth mode. So this is a kind of airplane mode. It will disable all the antenna and those kind of things. Also, it will not record where you have been into the activity you are in. So uh, you won't be able to do a track back, for example. So that's the stealth mode. And there's also the night vision mode. And that one is the one I like. Um, what the night vision mode do is that, uh, <laughs> well, you won't be able to turn on the um, the back lighting, so you won't, you will never have uh, a big hollow on your wrist. But uh, I don't know what they do, but it seems like they turn on the backlight, but just a little bit, so you can see your watch. So at every time when you are in pitch black, you can look at your watch and you see it very well. Uh, you can see all the information very well, but it doesn't glow that's kind of special and also that make that if you are walking into pitch black you don't want to look at your watch with the backlight because it will kill your night vision also it will disable the heart rate sensor so you can uh, see well so, 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 so the enemy doesn't see you when you walking into a forest or anywhere so it will not produce light and make the screen visible for you. That's a very good feature. And for the rest, maybe there is few other little, little, very little feature, but it's the same thing as a Garmin Phoenix in a better case. It's so much the same thing that when I sync my activity to Strava, Strava tell me that my activity was recorded with a Garmin Phoenix. <laughs> the next thing that is mind blowing with that watch is the map. Seriously, the map is insane. You will see where you have been. So if you are uh, walking somewhere, you are in the wood, you will see on the map a red line that is your what you have uh, walked previously. You will see the name of the street, the name of the road. You will see all the little trail there is about everywhere. And even its name, you will see the name of the trail. You will see all the elevation. You will see you will see everything there is to see on a map. You will see where uh, it is reserved, where it is street, city, uh, beach, wood. Uh, you will just see everything you have to see about a map. You can see the uh, ski map. On every ski mountain, you will see all the track, and I think you can even see uh, with the color uh, the difficulty of the track. But that I'm not sure I didn't use it yet uh, in in ski. But I think you can see it. You can see a lot of data on the map, and you have many kind of map, and <laughs> you have the worldwide map at your wrist. Seriously, I never load any map into that watch and I try to zoom out, move to another continent and zoom in in many countries. I did it in North America, South Africa, Europe, Asia, Africa and always I was able to see the street, the street name, the elevation, everything. And you don't need internet for that. It's just right there at your wrist. You don't need a phone, you don't need a, a cellular connection, an internet connection, nothing. It's just straight right there. It's inside of the watch. I don't know how they make, but you got the worldwide map with street name and elevation right at your wrist. I need to make a little correction on this one. I was doing the editing and I was realizing that, you know, well, there's something that, that doesn't work in what I say. And well, I take a double look at the map and yes, you've got the worldwide map, but um, 
I had the impression that I had all the, the same information on all of the world because when I zoom on Asia, on Europe, well, I was seeing road. So I returned to uh, Europe and Asia and zoom in and in fact, the only thing I can say is the main road. I'm not able to see all of the road. I'm not able to see the elevation and all those stuff. I only see the main road, uh, the name of the cities and all those things. Uh, so I double check and what I have in my watch actually as map is uh, because I buy it in North America, I have North American maps and Central America maps. And those include all of the streets. I can see a bit of the topography. I can see rivers and lake. I can see those kind of stuff. I've got, I've got a very, very complete map. Uh, but about the elevation, all I do see is lines. There is not the, the elevation written on the line. I just see lines. However, if I click somewhere and I want to know what is the elevation of that place, well, I got it. But uh, if I want more precise elevation map, uh, topographic map, I can have it. And uh, that's th that cost about 100 US dollar per region. And if I take Canada, for example, there is, I think, about four or maybe five region to got them all. Um, if I would have to travel in Europe or Asia, well, I would need to buy the same kind of road uh, of map I have for uh, for Canada, uh, North America, and Central America, and they sold it for sixty US dollars. Actually, because if I were to go cycling somewhere else, well, I would I would only have main road on on the watch. So yes, that would be logical to pay $60 to get more maps. And the great things about this is that on the Garmin website, there is over 100 maps for sale. So if you need something for uh, on water, uh, lake, river, uh, there is, I, I did see a bicycle road in Canada and US, they sold it for $20. There is a coastal uh, maps, there is, a lot of kind of maps so if you have very specific needs in terms of mapping well there's a solution for you on the Garmin website uh, you can buy download and load a, a new map into your watch so let's come back to the video and <laughs> if you're looking for a restaurant a city an hospital a hotel anything it's right in there you look for restaurant and it will tell you what restaurant are around you you will not be able to, to to know if it's a good or not restaurant but you will see every restaurant around you with that watch if you're looking for a city you are on a big trip and you want to end the day at some city you can look to the city around you find it point it and it will give you the itinerary to go there. It's just like when you use Google Map uh, and you choose the sport you want to do, you choose the kind of road you want to use, you choose the kind of road you want to avoid, you, you choose everything, just like with Google Map and maybe even better. Uh, it will tell you when to turn right, where, where to turn red left, and how much kilometers you have left to uh, go. Uh, you got uh, ETE and ETA, so the estimated time remaining, the estimated time of arrival, you got the elevation plot until you arrive, you got the distance remaining until you arrive, you got all the information you may think you will need and even more. Uh, well, it will, it will not tell you turn left, but it will tell you doo -doo, and then you look at the watch and it will tell you that well in 200 meters you will have to turn left and 200 meters later it will tell you Doo -doo. so if you look it will tell you turn left now and you, you got all the information you want to have when you navigate straight at your wrist using a map using the road using the best road you can say i want to uh 
I want the shortest way. I want the fastest way, or I want the 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 way with、um, less elevation. You can choose pretty much what you want. Then I told you that if you want to go to a city,、uh, you can look for the city around and go there. But if the city is too far, you can type the name of the city and you will find it. I did it a few weeks ago with the restaurant. I was in Montreal and I was looking for a specific restaurant, and I was two kilometers and a half. Uh, close to that restaurant, and when I look for a restaurant around, well, I was at Montreal, so、uh, the twenty、uh, closest restaurant was in into the next three hundred meters. So I did type the name of the restaurant on the watch, and it find it, and give me the itinerary to go there by foot. That that was just incredible. That's a watch, and again, you don't need an internet connection. Or your phone connected to it to do it. You can do it straight into the watch. If you are in the mountain and you are lost, you can do a track back, so you will be able to follow your track. You can also do a route back that will find you the better way to come back, even if it's not the one you used to、uh, go where you are.、Uh, there is also fun、uh, option like sight and go where you can. Uh, for example, if you are at the bottom of a mountain, and you say,、oh, "Well, I want to go at the top of that mountain," but you know there is no trail that go there, so that that's bushwalking, and you want to go there, so you point it, you go, and it will create a straight line on the map, and you can follow that straight line to reach your objective. So, if at some point you are not able to follow that straight line because there is a cliff, well, you can find another way and come back to. Your straight line eventually. That's that's a very handy feature. There is the man overboard that,、uh, if for example you、uh, drop of a boat that is、uh, at a fixed location, and you get away with the wave, and you want to come back, well, the, the man overboard feature will have recorded the place where you have fell into water, and. Will tell you well. You need to go 300 meters into that direction to come back. So, well, that's another ND feature. I, I even see that you can、uh, do golf with the watch, and it got well. I would say it got every golf course in the world because there is not too far from me、uh, golf course, small one.、Uh, that's the one that is.、Uh, Claim to be for a new player into the city. That that's not a a great course, but that's one that, that's one that I love. But anyway, it's in the watch. There's 26 scores onto that、uh, golf club, and all of them are in the watch.、Um, Well, so so you you do your stuff. You arrive at. I never try it, but、uh, I did、uh, see it, and it seemed that well, when you arrive at the golf course at the beginning, you see,、uh, you see the map of your golf course. You know the distance between you and the hole. You got the image of、uh, the golf course. You know if it's a par two, three, four, or five.、Uh, you know everything, and you can count your point. Straight on the watch, and it will record it on the Garmin Connect app or the Garmin Connect website. That that's just mind blowing. Everything you can find about mapping in that watch, it, it is really, really mind blowing. Earlier, I told you that one of the thing I love about that watch is that it it's independent from a phone because you can sync your activity, but you can also change any setting of the watch. Straight there.、Uh, you want to change the info you see when you are into an activity. You want to change the the information you see on the top screen. You want to change anything. Well, you can do it straight on the watch. You never need a phone or a computer to change a setting on the on the watch. You always do it straight on the watch, even if you are on an activity. So one of the thing I hate about my Previous Suunto MB3 is that、uh, if I was hiking and I don't know I want to see my vertical speed but I didn't think to、uh, put it on my activity page 
well, that's too bad for me. I'm not able to see it. I need to come back home, connect it to my computer and sync it. And even if we look with the new Suunto 5, uh, <laughs> I could change it. I could change that info on my phone, but to do it, I would need to change it on my phone then sync it to the watch. But to sync it to the watch, I would need to stop my activity so I would split my activity to get the information and ah, oh, that would be complicated to change. With that one, I just press and hold the menu button, go to the page setting and choose what I want. If I don't know, I feel that my hearth have hard time actually and I want to track it carefully. Well, I can add a page with a beautiful graph of my hearth to see uh, which, which pace it is going. In, in which a zone it is, uh, at what pulse it go. I, I, I can just change anything at any moment during an activity or not. I can change anything at any moment straight from the watch and the menu are very well done. Maybe if you are not used to um, play with those kind of device, you will have hard time to find it. But if you take the time to uh, navigate into the menu and don't worry about crashing something. You, you can't crash anything by going into the menu, but just play with the menu uh, and, and you'll see all the all the things that you can do with it. That's just mind blowing. My, again, that's that, that just so great. Another great thing about the watch is the fact that the altimeter is so precise. Really, uh, I use GPS watch since a while and that's the first one that if I start an activity just right here, I go for cycling an hour, two, maybe three. Uh, I will go through elevation, uh, going up, going down, going up, going down and I will end up here. And at the end, almost every time, it will give me the same elevation gain as the elevation loss. Well, sometime it can go up to uh, one person merge of error, but that's it. Uh, I know it's logical that it's the same thing, but if you if you use another watch, well, you won't get something as precise. So that tell me that this watch is very precise in the information it gives you through the altimeter. And yes, it's a barometric altimeter. So it got the GPS alt altitude and also the barometric altitude. So it does a combination of both to got something very precise. I told you earlier that I love the fact that the screen is huge. And one thing I love about it is the quantity of info I can have straight on the main page. So actually I've got the time so it's 14 o'clock uh, 41 minute we are Wednesday and we are the 8th of September actually it's not it, it doesn't say September but I know we are in September but I know we are there the 8th then I put on the top uh, info that uh, the altitude actually is uh, 143 meters I've got uh, 17 days of battery left I like the fact that it doesn't tell me that the battery is at 100% or, or 50% or 21%. I like the fact that the watch tell me how much time of battery there is remaining in the setup it is. So if I start an activity and I use the GPS, well, it will tell me that I have 59 hours left of battery. Or if I put it in a in energy saving mode, well, it will tell me, I think it's 60 days of battery, something like that. Uh, that will disable uh, some feature syncing, uh, that will disable the hearth rate, that will uh, disable some stuff. It will disable a lot of stuff, but you've got 60 days of battery or something like that. Uh, then uh, the lower position, I've got the outside temperature. Yes. <laughs> it can get the information on the Wi-Fi or it can get it uh, through Bluetooth with your phone and the Garmin Connect app. So actually, I know that outside it's 20 degrees Celsius. 
the temperature stuff, uh, the temperature gadget, I never love them because I think they are useless. I can get the temperature on my computer or on my phone, but having it here, well, that's now the place where I look the weather because I just have to do that. Oh, it's 22 outside. That's it. So when I'm going out for running, walking, cycling, well, I just look on my watch that I already have on my wrist because I'm going to cycling. I doesn't wear it all day long, most of the time, but when I'm going out, I always have the watch at my wrist. So I just have to do that. And I know when I have to wear accordingly to the actual temperature. Then I've got my hearth rate and the sunset time. So actually today the sun will set at 1916. And as soon as it will set, it will tell me at what time it will rise. So another ND feature. And those info, well, you can choose what you want to have. There is a lot, but a lot of option you can see on the main page. That's the info I choose to have. But then if I want to press a button, well, I can uh, go into the widget. So from here, I'm able to see uh, again the temperature. Uh, everything is blue uh, on the line. So that means that uh, there will have rain for the next 12 hours. Uh, I can see 26 on 14, so that's the maximum and the minimum of the day. And if I enter into that option, again, I will see those uh, information. I can see it feels like three. I can see that there is a three kilometers wind from west and actually it is uh, raining. It's 100% sure. I'm able to see the weather for the next 12 hours. I'm able to see the weather for the next four days. I'm able to see uh, the uh, rain and uh, temperature for the next 12 hours on a graph. And if I come back, I'm able to see the sunset and sunrise for today on that beautiful graph. And if I'm going up or down, I'm able to see the temperature for the next days. <laughs> Uh, or the previous days, I can see the sunrise and sunset time for any days of the week. And that doesn't stop there. I can see the sunrise and sunset time for any city in the world. Is it something you're gonna use every day? No. Every week? No. Every month? No. <laughs> but in the, last, in the last six months, well, I use it twice. And one of those times I was with someone, it was because we were talking about the sunrise and sunset time in Norway, because at some point in the years, they have something very special. The sun is always rise, and at some point in the years, the sun is always uh, set. So, well, we were talking about this, and we were wondering what was the sunset and sunrise time for today in Norway, in Oslo, and well, I was able to type Oslo in Norway to see at what time it was rising or set. It's a watch. It's, it's crazy all the thing it can do. What else do I have into those widgets? I've got the solar intensity. I've got the compass. The compass, by the way, it just works so well. Um, I know that into that, that direction, it's 119 degrees and it just work, it just work. Uh, I've got the altimeter, barometer, uh, about the barometer you can set a uh, storm alert uh, because if the, uh, the, the, the atmospheric pressure drop of, you choose how much uh, millibar in, in, in three hours, I think. Um, and well, if that happened, you will get a storm alert and you choose uh, if, if you want it uh, every time it drops just a little bit or if it needs uh, more millibar to drop to got the alert. That's again is pretty well done. You got how much calorie you burn today. You got um, your last activity, the number of steps you've done today. You got your uh, blood oxygen, you got your calendar, you got music control, you got your respiration rate, you got a lot of things and all 
Again, this is things you can configure. What do you want to see first? What you want to see next? What you don't want to see? What you want to add? You, you can choose what you want. You can do a lot of stuff into that watch. Even if you're not into inactivity, it does monitor a lot of stuff. About the respiration rate, I told you that it can uh, monitor it. Uh, I don't know how it does. It's probably with the heart rate center of the back, but I don't know how, how the mate, because well, uh, it doesn't breath with my wrist, but anyway, it does work. It doesn't work into inactivity, but when you're not into inactivity, it will be able to tell you what is your average uh, respiration rate, rate of the day. Another thing that is great is that you can pause an activity and restart it later. So I was thinking that when I was doing my big cycling trip, I was starting my watch at the beginning of the day and only stop it at the end of the day. And um, I'm thinking with my MB3, I never stop the activity because if I put the activity on pause, well, it keeps showing me the speed I'm going even if I'm on pause. So I was always forgetting to restart the activity. Just because when I was looking, I was able to see the information. I was telling myself that, yes, it is working and never realized that, well, it wasn't paused. So at some point I was losing some information of the day because I didn't record it because I put it in on pause because I go inside. And when you go inside and you don't put it on pause, well, you got trouble with your GPS because it starts moving in any direction because the uh, satellite reception is poor. And so, yes, I like to pause my activity when I go inside, but I wasn't doing it because I was worried to forget to restart it, restart it when I go back on my bike. But with, with, with this one, when you pause it, you can go down just a little bit on, to the option and you can say restart later. So this will take you back to the main screen. And when you're ready to uh, restart, well, you press on start, it takes you back to your activity page and you can press on start and you're ready to go. And just the fact that you are on the main screen, well, that's a good thing when you are uh, in the restaurant because you can see what time it is. You can see all the information you want to see when you are not into an activity and well, when you go back to your bike and you look at your watch to see at what speed you are going, well, you realize very quickly that you are not into your activity mode and you're not recording this activity because you see your main screen. So, yeah, another great thing about that watch. Another great thing when I compare with, with my old watch, I never realized it until I used that one. Well, that left... That, that center button on the right is on the left with Garmin. And what's great about this is that when... <laughs> when you wear a watch, well, yes, of course, you can use your index to press the button, but it just works better with your thumbs. You want to use the watch with your thumbs and because the the button are just made like that, it, it just work better. And there is one other thing is that when I was cycling, well, with my hand on the handle bar and the, on the handle bar at some point, well, actually I'm not able to do it, but now I'm not able to do it. But when you're cycling at some point, you, you press accidentally that button when you do a certain move and you change the screen on the watch and that's a bit stupid. And this never happened with that watch. Uh, one thing about that that was worrying me at the beginning is that when, when you... I don't remember what button it is, but I think when you press and hold that button on the Suunto MB3, it will lock your activity so you don't can accidentally press on the start stop button and pause your activity accidentally but uh there that feature is not uh available on that watch that's a bit of a bummer but again uh that never happened 
in fact you can lock every button but by doing it you will not be able to switch from a page to another on your activity so but anyway uh, in six months it never happened so I don't really need it that's fine and yes the position of the button are more intuitive so yeah I, I like the position of the button of that watch and I also love the fact that there is no touchscreen you can see more and more smartwatch with touchscreen and I don't understand I never use one uh, maybe it's just me but I think that it's too small to be controlled with a finger and when I use that watch I'm doing sport and when I'm doing sport well most of the time I'm wet I'm wet because it's hot, I'm wet because I make myself warm, I'm wet because it's raining, I'm wet because I'm in the mud, and I don't want it, I don't want it, you know, a touchscreen, a wet touchscreen never works well. I mean, if I look at my phone, it never works well when, when, I, when I try to use it and my fingers are wet or it's raining so really no I don't want touchscreen on my watch so I love the fact that there is five button and I love their position another great feature is that you can run against yourself or you can set yourself an objective and you will be able to monitor it on the watch so if by example yesterday I uh, no last month I <laughs> run 10 kilometers actually i didn't run run it last month but for example and today i want to crush my 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 past time so i would be able to run my activity and see where i was on the previous activity so i can crush myself that's great or you can set yourself uh Maybe, okay, your previous best time for a 10K was one hour. And today you want to do it in 59 minutes. So you will set 10 kilometers and I want to do it in 59 minutes. And you will have a ghost that will go at a constant pace and you will be able to see where you are against that ghost that go always at the same pace. So when you're running for 10k, uh, well, you look at the watch, you look at your performance, maybe you were running faster at the beginning, uh, you want to keep energy for the end, you don't know if you need to push more now, y you just don't know. And this will help you to crush your past record. On the graph, you see yourself in green and the ghost is gray and you see uh, the average time uh, remaining at the, the pace you're going and you know how much time you are ahead or behind the ghost. Another thing that I love and that's mostly in cycling mode uh, it's the auto backlight when you look at the watch and the sun is set. <laughs> uh, so when I'm walking well, I don't really care. I can press the button just right here and turn on the backlight. Uh, but on a bike, I would have to remove my left hand from the handlebar or keep it on the handlebar and take my right hand and press the button and then put it back and look. That's not that great. With that one, I just look at the watch and it auto turn on the backlight and that's it. It will turn off in 10 seconds. Uh, at the beginning, I was surprised at how it only turned on when I look at it. So I think it's just when you move it up. You don't have to move it fast. Uh, every time it will look up, uh, the backlight turn on. I was moving my hand in any way and it never come up until I look at it. Maybe even if I do it slowly. Well, now after I tried for six months, I can say that sometime it turned on for nothing. Well. Nothing, not nothing. I was moving my hand and not looking at it, but still it turned on. But not too often. Still, it's great. It's a very, very great feature. 
Another feature that is very handy is that you can find your phone with the watch and find the watch with your phone. So actually, if I'm looking for my phone, I just go into the option just right here and say, find my phone. And find it. There's a graph that say if you are close or far and it work. It work every time. Uh, that's a feature that I use at least once a week because I lose my phone very often. <laughs> But yeah, I got my, my watch on my wrist and I'm able to find it very quickly. I never use it to uh, find my watch, but uh, it worked too. I, I test it, but I just never, uh, I just never, but I never lose that watch. <laughs> there is one feature that when I tested the first time I was telling myself, seriously, is it really useful? And it's that one. Yeah, it's white. What it is, it's the flashlight. So I put it on a shortcut. So when I press those two buttons, it enable the flashlight. That's what I told you earlier. Uh, that was the button to do the kill switch. Now it's for the flashlight for me. And well, you see, it's, it's just white. It's just white and it put the uh, backlight at maximum. So I tested into that room, uh, that's my studio, so there is no uh, window, so it, when you turn off the light it's just pitch black, and well I was telling myself, well is it really useful, and yes it is. Uh, there was one day, one night in fact, that I was uh, going for a hike with one of my friend, and that was a night hike, so we begin the, uh, the hike that's a little six kilometers hike. We begin it after sunset. It was already pitch black. That was a night without uh, <laughs> without any moon. Uh, it was cloudy and well, it was almost pitch black. And both of us forget to bring a light, but we still managed to do it. So we <laughs> move into the trail and very, very slowly because it was hard. And at some point we tell ourselves, well, if we don't find a solution, we will need to, to go back because we will pass the, the night right here because it, it's too complicated. Uh, it was almost pitch black. So I try this feature, a flashlight on the watch and wow. Um, no, no, it doesn't, it doesn't light up all the trail but I would say that the three meters in front of me that's nine foot um, I was able to see what was coming so oh there's a rock right there there's a hole right there uh, the trail stuck there um, there's a tree fall in there I was able to see that kind of stuff with my eyes. I was not able to see the color of the rock or all those things, but I was able to see what was coming up. So just thanks to that, uh, we managed to uh, do the rest of the trail quite quickly. That was, again, awesome. There is one thing I didn't test. Uh, it's the music services. You can install um, Deezer, and Spotify right into it. There's the, the app. You can, uh, if you have an account, you can download your music into it. Uh, or you can even, with the USB connection at the back, you can transfer from your computer your own MP3s and you can listen to your music with your headphone. But again, uh, it's not a feature that I want to use, so I never use it yet, but I will eventually test it. But I didn't make it yet. Um, but yes, that's a feature that you can use. However, uh, I use the music on my phone. Uh, when I'm cycling, I put the music uh, into my shirt and well, I, I listen to the music through the speaker. And I like the fact that I can control it just right here. 
So, for example, I stop at a red light and there is people, I don't want to annoy people with my music, so previously I was looking for the volume button to put it down or I was removing it from my shirt, turning on, uh, make it not wet <laughs> and pause because it doesn't work if I doesn't dry it, whatever, touchscreen, I told you I don't like them. And now I can simply go on the uh, music control app and make a pause, skip or anything just from the watch. That's a great feature. And not only the watch is a powerful navigation tool, but you can get even more tool if you combine it with your phone and or your computer. So if you use the Garmin Connect app or the Garmin Connect website, uh, you can create itinerary. Uh, I love to do it from my big screen back there. I go on my website, I connect to my account and I can send the information straight from there. Uh, I can create my itinerary. I remember previously when I did Japan by bicycle and uh, the Scandinavia, uh, I did prepare my, um, my itinerary on Strava and well, I was not able to use Strava on my phone because I had no co internet connection when I was doing my trip and I was using Google Map and those kind of application. But now I, I already know that when I will plan my next trip, I will simply go on my computer, prepare my itinerary. It can use a popular road used by the Garmin community. It can use a lot of stuff. Seriously, it's, it's just awesome. And I will create my itinerary just straight in there. And the day that I will be ready to do it, I will go on my phone, select the itinerary I want and send it to my watch. I can even do it uh, in advance if I want. Before, before I leave, I can send all my itinerary into the watch and the day I'm ready to use it, well, it's just right there. I can look on the map. And when you create an itinerary on the computer, that's mind blowing. You have, if I remember, remember three maps. You got the Google map one, you got the um, open street map, and the other one I don't remember. But if there's a trail that is not, uh, maybe if you want to use Google Map because it's the best street map, you use it. But at some point you want to use a, a trail that it's not on Google Map, you use OpenStreetMap to continue your road, to put your waypoint everywhere. It's so well done. It's so well done. It's mind-blowing. Mind-blowing. And uh, you can even do it on the phone. You got the Garmin Connect application. You can create itinerary onto that. So if you're out of home and you want to create an itinerary with a bigger screen than this one, because you can create an itinerary on this, but well, it's, it's, it's small. So yes, it will be better on, on the phone. So you can do it. You also got the uh, Garmin Explore app. Uh, this one is a, is a app that you can in, in which you can download the map. So if you are not into a cell phone connection, you are lost in the middle of nowhere. You got the the map loaded into your phone. You can look at the map everywhere you want to go. You just hit on the map. You say navigate with the Garmin tactics, and boom, it's create the itinerary into the watch accordingly to the the location you. You, you point on your phone. Uh, you got a lot of tools like that that you can connect to the watch. And again, wow, it's mind blowing. I told you at the beginning that I got, uh, that I, I was surprised to, to got the, what I pay for and even more. And that's some of the stuff of the even more. That, that's just mind blowing everything you get for what you pay even if it's expensive. <laughs> Another thing that is surprising for me because I'm, I'm coming from Sunto uh, is that when, when, when you, you create an itinerary on your phone, even if you are into an activity, the watch is never gonna tell you, well, I'm busy, I'm not able to sync. Now, if you are into an activity and you create a new itinerary on your phone and you wanna send it to your watch, no problem. You can sync it and then you can select it without leaving the activity. Oh, and the Garmin Connect app, and I should say community, because it's a community. It's a bit like Strava. Uh, 
and maybe even better but it's just that you, you don't have as much people that on Strava on Strava you got all the community but still on the Garmin Connect app you got challenge you got a segment you got uh, badges you got uh, you got level you even got level so when you complete uh, challenges you got point and you uh, get uh, get level over time actually I'm level three I just realized that you can uh, have level by completing uh, some some challenge and I was just not registering to challenge maybe I, I would be at a higher level today if I had done so in the past but wow wow that's that's just amazing everything you can get from from the application that will motivate you to to move to do another activity to push yourself even harder so i'm convinced that with a watch like this one or any garmin watch in fact you will push yourself even further and be in better shape Another great thing you can do with the watch and or with, with the application, if you want, you, you do it the way you want, is that you can create a loop of a certain distance around you. So I don't know if you if you are somewhere you don't know and you want to explore and not passing twice at the same place. Well, you can say, well, actually, I want to ride 75 kilometers from here and I want to do a loop and you just Tell that to the watch and it will give you three options of loop you can do uh, from where you are. Sometimes you will pass twice at the same place and most of the time not. So it will just create a loop so you can explore what is around you. Another great feature. The USB connection at the back. Well, that's another great thing instead of having a, a clip. It's just a cable that go inside and it just go very well and nothing have negative to say about it it just work very well and it's the same connection for every garmin watch that i use uh, recently so another great thing about that watch the usb connection is great and works well the update the update just do themselves automatically so most of the time you wake up in the morning you look at your watch and it tell you that it has been update so that's it you, you you never wait for an update it, it just do it most of the time into the night so i never see an update run or on the watch i just see sometime that it did update another feature that is great and i hope i will never have to use it is that you can input emergency contact and if you if the watch never realized that you have an accident it will contact your emergency contact to tell them uh, it will be a, a text message and an email and it will tell that well you have a trouble and you are at this very location and waiting for help at first it tell the, the location that where it happened and then it also uh, turn on a live track so they will receive a link and when they click on it they will be able to see where you are at this very moment of course for this you need your phone and a cellular connection so if you're lost in the middle of nowhere it doesn't work but uh if you are into the civilization civilization or at least somewhere where, where you have sort of a cellular network well that will work you 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 should be fine uh and i did it did pop up twice i activated maybe three months ago and actually did pop up twice one of those time, I don't know why I did it, but I, I was cycling and I stopped really hard and that pop up on the screen. I had 10 seconds to press on the button to say, no, don't, don't, don't call emergency, I'm fine. Uh, otherwise you can uh, press again on the button after that and it will send a message to say, uh, no, okay, uh, forget about it, I'm fine. Uh, and the other time, well, I was walking with my dog and my dog had to go see a porcupine. And yes, it's, well, she got 220 spike on his head. And well, that, that wasn't pretty. So the watch detect that there was something wrong 
probably because my hearth start to I was just walking and my hearth start to uh, go crazy probably and the watch detected there was clearly something wrong that wasn't about me that was about me worrying wor worrying about my dog and well everything is fine now <laughs> but uh, the watch detected so again I had 10 seconds to uh, to stop it but I was too to mind uh, on my dog that I didn't press it so it did call the emergency contact the one thing I didn't like about it is that it's um, stop my walking activity to switch it to uh, emergency activity so I didn't have all of my walk on Strava I got it on on, uh, on Garmin Connect but not on Strava and on Garmin Connect it's split into two activity the walking activity and the emergency activity but whatever uh, that's a great feature if you ever need one if you ever need it uh, if you felt on your bike and you are unconscious well that's a very great feature now eh, I speaking good about this watch since a while does it have negative point well not a lot <laughs> it does got three negative point the first one it's made in China and when you buy a watch at this price well Garmin is a US company now based in Switzerland I don't understand why this watch is made in China well they doesn't say it really clearly on the watch well actually if you remove it just right here right I oh, know it's on the other side <laughs> they, they hide it pretty well I think I did see it on on the box uh, but just right yeah it's right there it's hidden over there it says Taiwan on it so is it China or Taiwan I'm not sure I think on the box it was written it, it was saying China but on the watch it says Taiwan well still you look at the watch it feels quality it is quality it, it's just it not just feel quality it is quality I don't think if they made it into United States or Switzerland or any other country uh, the watch would have been better made it's a quality watch but hmm, it's made in China that I don't know when, when you buy an expensive watch normally it's always built in the country of the watch company not Garmin watch any watch you can buy from Garmin are actually made in China the other negative point is about the heart rate sensor <sighs> well still it's the best earth rate sensor you can get on a watch like this if I compare to my other watch that's by far the best well the instinct one is almost as good but the one on the Sunto 5 is terrible it's so bad that they shouldn't have put it uh, they just should not put a thing that doesn't work on the watch that one work but the thing I don't like is that I feel that in the first 10 minutes when I go cycling maybe it's because I'm cycling a lot and I've got a weird position with I don't know I, I really don't know uh, but the earth rate doesn't seem right so when I do my cycling at night I go for a one hour at full pace and I don't know why you tell me that uh, when I feel that I, I, I'm pumping at 160 or 170 it tell me that I go at 120 and after 10 minutes it seems better but if at some point I go slowly and maybe I pump at 140 and then I start giving myself and I feel that my hearth going up it doesn't go up just right now on the watch it takes some time so I feels that I, I feels that 
maybe it's an average because at the end on the graph on the app it seems right but when i'm doing the activity it seems that the watch show me an average of the last minute or two minutes maybe it takes time because be before the, the 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 right info show up i think and the last negative point is one thing that was better made on my Suunto MB3. There is no feature when you use the watch to know how much time remain until sunset or sunrise. Uh, you can have the sunset time and the sunrise time. So you have to do your own calculation. And if you put uh, the sunset time, you will only have the sunset time, not the sunrise. On my Suunto MB3, it was the time remaining to the next occurrence. That was awesome, and that's not available on that watch. That's the only thing I can say. And it's something they can fix with an update. So I hope they will do it one day. Oh, and there's a fourth one. Can you hear that? Actually, it doesn't do it. Sometimes you hear the... <laughs> that. Uh, that's something in the band. Maybe I can put some jiggle somewhere. That's the fourth point. Except that it's just a perfect watch for me. There's one thing maybe you realize by looking at the watch since the beginning of the video. I did realize that it's hard to film it, right? Uh, when you see it like that on the screen, you may th think that the, the watch is hard to see, but I can tell you that in every position, it is easily readable. If I compare it with the Garmin instinct watch uh well actually in in the dark it is easier to read but you can always turn on the light so i never ever got hard time to read the screen the screen is just wonderful um yeah so do i recommend it yes is it expensive yes but i can promise you that if you buy that watch you won't regret it. You got something of quality. You've got an amazing, an amazing tool that will do everything you want and even more. Uh, but yes, yes, it's expensive, but you get what you pay for. Really, it, it worth it. Uh, for the battery life, for the the quality of the screen, the size of the screen, for for all the mapping, there is the routing. It's just mind blowing everything it can do and i feel that i only have it since for i only have it for six months now but i feel that I, it's a watch that will survive many 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 years so yes it's uh 15 out of 10 recommendation it's just a mind-blowing watch now if you want to buy it i have leave you link into the description so you can buy it from the store you want and if you use it i thank you for it because uh, it doesn't cost you anything more but i make a commission out of it and one other great thing about the watch uh before i buy it because it's very expensive i always wait to black friday to see if the price will drop and i look at the price of the watch for over a year now and never a single time it get discounted never it's always the same price and that's the thing i respect because i always wait to black friday to buy expensive things because i feel that if it go on discount well i pay too much when i buy it because if they can sell it at this price they surely not lose money and because that watch never dropped price well you always buy it at the best price all year long. Maybe when it will be discontinued and there will be a new model, this one will be in discount, probably. But actually, 
until there's a new model, you pay the, the fair price all year long. That's great. Now, if you want to see all my tutorial about the watch, you can see my playlist just right here. This will probably help you to use the watch. I did a lot of work to make those video and I will probably make even more. That's on my how to channel. And well, I hope this video was helpful for you, for your reflection. And I promise you, you will love this watch. That's, that's my new everyday watch. I love it. That's my favorite watch. So again, I hope this was helpful. Take care and I hope to see you in another video. See ya. So this is it. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoy. And if you need help to find this product online, please see my links in the description. And finally, don't forget to smash that like button and subscribe to my channel so you can find me back easily next time you're looking for a great review video. See ya.